Hey guys, hey, so about two weeks ago I received a question um, on a YouTube video and now I can't find it. So I saw the question and I read the question and now I can't find it in the thread again. I went to my notifications and for whatever reason I just can't find it again. But I remember the gist of the question and I really want to answer it, okay, um, to the best of my ability. And the question bas basically was talking about, it came from a licensed practitioner, so this was not from a student, but students, pay attention. You can learn a lot from inquisitive licensed practitioners. You can learn a lot from any licensed practitioner. You can learn a lot of bad things from licensed practitioners that have lost the desire to continue learning because they're still going to be doing things the old ways. Okay, so the most important person you can learn from is the current day practitioner that is still inquisitive about learning and being able to admit when they're a little rusty on things and they don't remember that. So I'm going to brush up on it and I'm going to go find the answer. Okay, complacency, stay away from it. All right, because they're not going to really really uh, be able to help you in terms of, of, of new practices. They're going to be more in terms of, well, this is just the way we've always done it, which doesn't promote growth for you as a practitioner, nor growth within our profession as respiratory therapists as a whole. Okay, so, so the question, or is more of a comment that was talking about a patient was in pressure control, and the doc was talking about Delta P being 17, and was relating that to the patient having ARDS. And the question basically, if I remember it correctly, was could I refresh on what Delta P tells you or what, what Delta P numbers indicate to you as far as different disease processes? And the answer to that question is, is it doesn't. It, a, 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 a Delta P number, which is the change in pressure, doesn't signify or doesn't indicate any one disease process. All delta P does is when I say delta P, I'm talking about change in pressure. So whatever baseline is to whatever peak inspiratory pressure is, okay? That's your delta P. So let's do it like this. So if we say delta P, then what we're saying is if this is your pressure waveform, then baseline is here, breath comes up, holds, returns to baseline. This here is your delta P from baseline to pressure. So let's say we have a peak of 10 and our peak inspiratory pressure here is 37. Okay, then our delta P equals 27. Okay, now all you need to know when it comes to delta P is that the greater the delta P the worse the lung compliance. Okay, let me say that again. The worse the lung compliance is, whether it's static compliance or dynamic compliance, then the greater the delta P is going to be required to be to generate an adequate tidal volume in order to generate an adequate minute volume with the intentions of normalizing and maintaining a normal pH balance. Okay? So when you talk about delta P, I, I don't know the answer to your question when it says, when is the delta P at this level indicate ARDS? I don't, I don't, there's not an answer to that question because you can have a delta P of 27 and your patient may have ARDS. They may also have pulmonary fibrosis. They may also have bilateral pneumonias. They may also have status asthmaticus. So... So it doesn't really tell you anything, that number. Now, what I want to do now is I want to talk to you about a new pressure that is slowly being talked about more and more and more within the respiratory community. You may have heard of it. It may have been glossed over in school. Uh, it wasn't even touched on when I went to school. And even in, through my educational years of, as a teacher, we didn't, we, we didn't talk about this pressure that I'm about to talk to you about. And this may be where the physician that you were talking to, having that conversation with, maybe have been talking more about driving pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a line here and say driving pressure. Okay? Now driving pressure is not the same as delta P. 
Maybe there was some confusion there, and maybe he thought Delta P was driving pressure. I don't know, okay? The physician you were talking about, him, her, maybe maybe they had it backwards, maybe they didn't, who knows, okay? But driving pressure is slowly becoming a key factor in mechanical ventilation and in the art of mechanical ventilation. And if you can start talking about driving pressure, and if you can quote some of these studies that are new and coming out and talking about driving pressure, okay, you are going to be very valuable to your physician's team and in treatment and in the care of your ARDS patients. Okay. Now, first of all, what is driving pressure? It's simply this. It's the difference in plateau pressure and PEEP. So this is different. Delta P is the difference in PIP from baseline. So PIP minus PEEP. If you have a PIP of zero, then it's PIP minus zero, okay? But driving pressure is plateau minus PEEP, okay? And what they're looking at and what the new studies are showing when it comes to driving pressure is that the best outcomes related to ARDS, and this is what makes me think that this is possibly what this particular physician was talking about is because they linked delta P of 17 into the conversation with ARDS. Driving pressure is being highly correlated with the outcomes of ARDS. So higher survival rate of ARDS with better outcomes are being associated with driving pressures that are maintained at 15 centimeters of water pressure or less. 15 centimeters of water pressure or less. When you look at your, you look at your patient, You've got them on their, their 4 to 6 mLs per kilo in the Arginet protocol. you got them on their high peeps. Okay, you got your plateau pressures less than 30. And what you're looking at is, are my driving pressures 15 or less? And if they are, then that is, that's going to correlate with what these studies are showing greater outcomes for your ARDS patients. Okay, now, I know what you're thinking, like, dang, man, this is... This is interesting, at least it was to me, because I had never heard of this particular pressure and calling it driving pressure and actually monitoring. I've never seen a chart one that has asked me to document the driving pressure. Okay, so if you're doing this out here, I would love for you to put a comment in the section and say, hey, yeah, we document that at such and such. And I would love to learn more about it and what your experience with it is. Okay, but here in my area, my neck of the woods, it's not really something that's being talked about unless you're a nerd like me and you get into research and, and, and reading articles and research articles that are talking about this new driving pressure. Okay, now when I thought this, I thought to myself, nah. Driving pressure. I haven't never heard of it, first of all. Now i got to learn it. How am I going to put this into my practice routinely? How am I going to routinely make myself, when I don't have to document it, how am I going to routinely make myself start incorporating driving pressure into what I do on a daily basis, okay, in the ICU, taking care of sick, mechanically ventilated patients routinely? And this is what I discovered. If you think about it, we already do this, okay? Think about your static compliance formula. That's your formula for static compliance. It's tidal volume over plateau pressure minus PEEP. And that gives you your static compliance. Okay? So think about it like this. And this is how I did this. This is what I challenged myself to do. I retaught myself the static compliance formula. I said, no longer do I think about this as tidal volume over plateau pressure minus PEEP. I think about this as tidal volume divided by driving pressure. And that's how I think about it and that's how I incorporate it into my daily uh, routines and my daily rounds uh, when dealing with patients in the ICU. Okay. Now the other, things I wanna, the other thing I want to tell you is this. You can only use driving pressure when you're in volume control because you have to use a plateau pressure. Okay. Remember, you cannot assess plateau pressure in pressure control because pressure control by nature increases the pressure and holds it for the duration of the eye time and then returns to baseline. That's not plateau pressure. 
Plateau pressure is when you give a set tidal volume and hold it after the set volume has been delivered and then let it go. And that is your plateau pressure. Plateau pressure takes the, air, the movement of air through the airways out of the equation. Pressure control does not do that. So you have to be in volume control to assess your plateau pressure and to assess your driving pressure. Remember, 15 centimeters of water pressure is your limit. Everything 15 centimeter waters and less equates to better outcomes in the care of your ARDS patients. Hey, you want more information on this? Google right now. I'm not going to put the link down. You got it. Okay, I did my research. You do yours now. Google ARDS ARDSnet protocol driving pressure and see what you find. More articles than you can read in one night. Have fun doing it. Good luck.